I'm Vicky Vanaila, uh, Trust Services Director with Intesi Group, an Italian uh, qualified trust service provider. And I shared the virtual stage today with Norbert uh, Zachstetter, Head of uh, Electronic Government and uh, Trust H4 Unit from European Commission, with Ricardo Genghini, uh, Chairman Etsy ESI, and with Herbert Leitold, uh, Secretary General from uh, Austrian Secure Information Technology Center. Uh, we will discuss the new uh, European digital identity framework uh, proposed by so-called EIDAS 2.0 uh, last month. Uh, what is new, how this will be uh, better and why the future will be bright for EU citizens. Um, I would like to start the uh, discussion uh, regarding uh, the new electronic identity wallet, EU wallet. Uh, what we have here within uh, the new proposal is a game changer for such a multifaceted uh, concept as uh, digital identity. Uh, we as citizens uh, will have uh, the possibility to manage our personal credentials, our verifiable attributes. Uh, we will be able to authenticate uh, with service providers uh, providing uh, legal proof without the need to share unnecessary information. So selective disclosure and uh, data minimization are rebalancing uh, in a way the relationship uh, between and electronic platforms or service providers, uh, preserving our privacy and our fundamental uh, rights in the end. Because we know that uh, we are aware the, that the digital identity is the mother of everything in the digital world. So looking um, as this, at this picture, uh, we are aware that uh, bringing to life uh, such an ecosystem is possible only in a collaborative way uh, between uh, European Commission, member states, uh, standardization bodies, conformity assessment bodies, private sector, uh, trust service providers. So uh, looking at, uh, at this uh, picture uh, where we have um, a new uh, setting of the identity framework where uh, selective disclosure and data minimization are rebalancing the relationship between uh, citizens and electronic platforms or uh, service providers, uh, giving us the, the privacy and preserving our uh, fundamental rights. Uh, we are aware that uh, bringing to life uh, this ecos ecosystem is possible only in a collaborative way. So we should uh, all work together, the European Commission, uh, member states, standardization bodies, conformity assessment bodies, uh, private sector trust service providers. So I would kindly ask uh, Ricardo now, who is the uh, chairman of uh, Etsy ES. I, uh, leading a fantastic team of experts um, who successfully published different standards in support of EIDAS regulation to give his, um, his opinion. How, uh, how do you see, Ricardo, the role of Etsy, ESI, and of the standardization bodies within uh, this new framework? Yes, uh, thank you, Vicky. You can hear me? Yes. Well, um, um, my answer, uh, uh, particularly because Norbert uh, ultimately wasn't able to participate, uh, um, requires that um, I say a few things about um, the, the draft of the ADAS uh, regulation amendment. And uh, uh, fundamentally, um, it this draft sets uh, some uh, important principles like uh, that the identity and the wallet shall be under the sole control of the citizen. And, uh, and it speaks also about technologic neutrality, which uh, uh, if we come down to wallets, it's uh, even a bit contradictory because a wallet is already one of the possible solutions for managing uh, identities and not 
the only one. Um, but fundamentally, uh, the regulation uh, uh, shows uh, to be aware that um, proper digital identities are essential uh, for um, a proper uh, implementation of the data protection rights uh, foreseen in G the GDPR. It, um, it clearly uh, is aware that uh, a proper digital identity is a matter of, uh, of personal freedom and uh, protection of the fundamental rights. Um, so I would say that from a legal point of view, uh, we have a lot of important principles and uh, general statements uh, in, in the regulation. But when we uh, try reading uh, the proposal as it is uh, uh, to find out uh, what exactly uh, should uh, look like uh, a digital identity or a wallet, uh, um, um, the legislation that we have there is extremely uh, open, let me say so. And um, uh, it is open to implementing act, uh, acts, uh, it's open uh, towards uh, standardizations. It relies uh, to the definition of the toolbox uh, um, for um, a better uh, understanding of uh, wallets and uh, identities, how they should work uh, and uh, what technical features they will have. So at this point of the legislative process, it's uh, rather difficult to uh, make uh, uh, with a, such a generic, uh, important, but still generic piece of legislation. Uh, it is difficult to uh, really go down to the uh, nitty gritty and bits and bytes of the standardization or of the technical issues because uh, actually there are um, legal and uh, functional procedural issues that are still open looking at the legislation that we have. And all this considered, the answer to Vicky's question uh, for those who work with me will be quite unsurprising and uh, even a bit boring. But um, what we have to do is uh, to separate uh, technical issues from legal issues we have to um, uh, do that uh, and looking to uh, what uh, is there in the legislation, it is pretty clear to me that standardization um, clearly has an important role in defining what data and in which way this data will be allowed to access the wallets, what will be their format, uh, in what way they will be um, presented and accepted uh, by, by, by the wallets. And these are all technical issues. Meanwhile, we um, clearly have to steer clear of any legal complications that cannot be solved technically. Let me make an example. In some, uh, uh, in some uh, uh, legal environments, the statement that you finished high school or that you graduated at university is um, um, an official statement by a public administration. In other uh, legal environment, uh, it may be just uh, uh, a private declaration of a legal entity that has no whatsoever public power. Now, the statement in both cases says that Riccardo Gingini finished university and high school, but clearly their legal relevance is, is completely different in these, two di in these two different legal environments. So standardization will focus on how to onboard this information in uh, uh, the wallet in the system of credentials and attributes and uh, what format, uh, what process uh, technically will carry this information in and out of the wallet, how it can be accessed and with what security features, all clearly 
technical issues that can be standardized and solved uh, by common standards. But this must be irrespective of uh, any uh, evaluation of the legal value of this information, which always depends on different legal environments. And we have uh, 26 legal environment in Europe um, at this very moment. So I, I would say the answer to Vicky's question is, uh, the first step is to separate technical issues from other issues. And the second step is to focus on security and input output processes um, and formats uh, uh, and not on uh, the uh, evidential value or the semiotic context of the data that are shared through wallets and, uh, and, uh, and provided by uh, identity providers or attribute providers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, I would like to, uh, to discuss a bit about the uh, requirements. There are several requirements uh, within the proposal regarding the conformity uh, certification for the wallet and for uh, different uh, components of, uh, from this uh, ecosystem. Um, so I would invite uh, Herbert if uh, he could uh, share uh, his thoughts on that, how uh, do you see Herbert um, as its position uh, within these uh, requirements and how are, uh, what are your suggestions uh, for us? Yes. Uh, thank you, Vicky. Uh, I hope anyone can, can hear me. Yes. Uh, uh, first, just one sentence on ACID. ACID currently already under EIDAS is, uh, uh, is doing conformity assessment and yes. also uh, certifications uh, in the signature area. So that is the background why I'm talking about certification. Uh, and uh, if you if we take the, the commission proposal as working assumption, I mean, that's that's what we have there. Uh, certification and conformity is, is, is a pretty interesting and even rather broad uh, aspect, as there is a requirement uh, that uh, accredited and, and uh, uh, notified member state bodies uh, assess the conformity of the wallet against the, against the requirements of the, the regulation or of the future regulation. These requirements, however, are uh, pretty broad. So there is a conformity requirements on several areas. Uh, functional, uh, 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 functional requirements, assurance requirements, and, or, and also security requirements. My comfort zone is security requirements as, as ACT is doing the security certifications. I, however, would, would even start with the, the functional uh, conformity, which, uh, which uh, neatly fits uh, to what Ricardo addressed, because that is interoperability. And that will be a very important part as uh, uh, the the EID, European EID wallet is meant to be uh, used cross-border, meant to be used uh, with gatekeepers. I mean, the, the big uh, uh, web uh, applications, Google, Facebook, you, you name them, uh, meant to be used with public authorities and relying parties uh, in a cross-border context. And uh, that requires interoperability, that requires uh, uh, interfaces, that requires good standards, that requires that standardization uh, considers uh, those uh, testings in advance, that requires some transparency so that the relying parties can test, and uh, there are provisions in the regulation on that, such as uh, asking to have sandboxes uh, so that you can test. Yeah. And, Taking again the driving license as an, as an example, just, just show a bit uh, uh, what the complexity uh, uh, could be. I mean, uh, an electronic uh, uh, driving license is a nice thing to have. Uh, the, uh, the proposal uh, gives examples so that you can use the driving license uh, to show to a police officer in, in another country. Uh, well, that may depend on the on the driving style, but uh, actually, 
uh, I don't remember when when I last time have shown my, my driving license to a police officer. Uh, I'm not speeding off, obviously, but I, I need the driving license several times a year, like when renting a car. So when I rent a car, uh, I need to show the, uh, uh, the driving license to a private sector provider, so the, the, the car renter. I probably also want to have uh, uh, my ins insurance that already covers uh, car rental uh, also on the wallet. And the car rental company wants to give me a uh, hand over the, the car license as well electronically. So you have several players. and. One of the currently uh, relevant standards there on mobile driving licenses, uh, Google, for instance, has already announced that uh, that that standard will be uh, integrated in Android 11 as well. So you have a number of players, private sector and public sector, that shall work with different wallets uh, issued by by member states. So I, I see quite a uh, uh, an important aspect on that uh, or importance in that interoperability aspect uh, and happy to play that for towards Ricardo because he's representing the standardization organizations here. And then we have the security aspect and the uh, even though we have no clue yet what the actual certification requirements will be, uh, there will be challenges. Uh, we are talking here mobile devices, which means a very dynamic market, uh, which means uh, several stakeholders. You have the platform providers, you, Huawei, Apple, uh, Samsung, you name them. Uh, you have the providers, for instance, of secure elements. You have the operating system providers. Uh, and uh, uh, you have certification standards uh, with standards like common criteria or others under the, the, the Cybersecurity uh, Act. And the device and the wallet are, are consumer devices. So uh, we have years of experience uh, in, in certifying uh, at high levels of assurance, passports, uh, ID cards and so forth. But usually you don't buy your ID card at Amazon and usually you don't select uh, the cheapest vendor. So uh, uh, we are operating in an, in, in an ecosystem with uh, uh, a high number of, of, of stakeholders uh, in a very dynamic uh, uh, environment. You know yourself how, how often you, you, you change your, your uh, operating system on the mobile phone, how often you change your mobile phone, how often your kids uh, uh, break their, their phones. And the certification standards uh, need to be resilient enough uh, so that uh, you also reach the goal of coverage. Because having, a, having nice certification standards that only work for, for a, a, a fraction of the, the mobile phones in the market do not help uh, to get, uh, to get the, the ultimate goal to serve the citizens. Uh, so it needs to work with, the, uh, with the, the devices or there need to be some minimum security levels because that is what, uh, what the responsibility uh, the member states have towards their citizens. On the other hand, it also needs to work with, uh, with the majority of devices out there. So those are a bit the challenges I see in, in certification. Summarizing also uh, the, the current proposal gives uh, two parts uh, related to the certification. Some is uh, more on functionality and on interoperability. And I see that very important so that uh, that integration with the various relying parties is, uh, is smooth and seamless, and the security requirements. And that will be quite a challenge to establish uh, uh, standards that uh, provide that minimum uh, level of assurance and, uh, and security on the one hand, but that also uh, are applicable uh, to that dynamic market considering also that uh, the major vendors or some major vendors are not European. 
So uh, that that needs to be taken into 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 consideration as well, so that the, those certification standards are taken up uh, by those that pro produce the devices as well. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Thank you. Um, I think uh, we have um, another uh, another uh, challenging aspect regarding the electronic identity onboarding of the existing uh, electronic identity within the wallet or the new electronic identity with uh, within the EU uh, wallet. So, how do you see um, uh, the? The situation, how will coexist uh, on the on the market, the electronic identities issued and managed by the member states or by the private sector, uh, because we have seen there are a lot of movement within the private sector. Uh, I refer here to the uh, financial and uh, banking sector where they uh, manage to issue and uh, to have a. Uh, taking uh, uh, very successfully, uh, embracing very successfully from uh, from the market of bank ID, uh, name ID, and so on and so forth. So what will happen in the situation like member states uh, having many ID providers, uh, how they will be onboarded on the wallet? So uh, what about mobile EIDs that already support attributes and wallet-like features? Uh, for instance, I'm referring here to, to Austria electronic identity. Herbert, if you can comment here. Thank you. I mean, that, uh, that will be a very interesting aspect of, of how to uh, 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 Get the wallets to the citizens and how to, to, to combine them with the with the existing situation and that that I think will uh, depend pretty much on the actual situation in the in the various member states. I mean, you mentioned Wiki, for instance, uh, very successful uh, electronic identity uh, solutions like from from the banking sector or think of it's me in Belgium that has been been or, or speed in Italy. <laughs> speed in Italy. Uh, uh, and and several others. I mean, Iha Kenning in the Netherlands, uh, and and where where you have uh, uh, many uh, uh, identity providers, uh, and those are uh, notified EIDs. And uh, what you what the slide already shows, and also the uh, proposal of the the EIDAS revision uh, in, envisions is that uh, the EU EIP wallet is based on the legal identity uh, of the citizens and the uh, authoritative uh, to that legal entity is the member state. I mean, Ma it's, it's the state that... Yeah. Master that, Exactly. Yeah. And uh, if, if there is a country where the, the uh, existing EIP environment already is spread uh, amongst various players in the market, in particular private sector, uh, like Speed in Italy or, or uh, the It's Me in, in Belgium, uh, I would envision that uh, the onboarding works like on that slide, uh, that you use your national EID once, for instance, a smart card based EID, uh, to link to your mobile phone and then use the EU EID wallet as, as a mobile EID. In other countries, uh, like Austria, for instance, Austria already, the, the existing EID and the upcoming new EID uh, has already some features you could call a wallet, like uh, uh, on the one hand, it's, it's a mobile EID, you can use it on your uh, uh, for additional attributes. Uh, and uh, currently Austria has some 2 million users of that. There I would rather see where the, the existing EID uh, is, uh, is a, a, a mobile app already that the migration towards uh, the uh, European EID wallet that each member state uh, is supposed uh, to, to provide to the citizens is just a transition, a seamless migration you use your existing mobile uh, EID, uh, 
you continue using it and uh, the functionality is enhanced what is is meant to be used uh, or meant to be provided uh, through the the regulation so in in such situations where the eid landscape already is to some extent uh, tied to uh, uh, member state issued uh, eids on the mobile phone i would see a, a seamless migration and transition in other member states, I would see an onboarding process that relies on that uh, national EIDs. So would coexist the two, uh, uh, for instance, the, the two wallets, the uh, EU ID uh, wallets uh, will exist for sure, but the previous one, the existing national wallet for EID uh, will continue to be supported or uh, to coexist with the, the new EU ID wallet. Do you think so? Yeah, I mean that. That's a bit reading uh, crystal balls uh, now, as we do not know yet what the actual uh, wallet uh, uh, functions will be. But uh, in the Austrian situation, I would rather uh, assume that that the existing one will will uh, increase functionality, and the existing one then will be the UEID wallet. Uh, in in other member states, like uh, for instance in Belgium, it's me being very popular. Uh, uh, there might be two sol solutions in parallel as well. And there are other players uh, uh, like, uh, like the mobile phone operating system providers and so forth that might provide similar functionality uh, as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think we should start uh, taking uh, questions and uh, answer to them. I see a couple of questions. For instance, uh, someone asked if uh, can FIDO play a role in the certification of the security level of the devices? I think it's a question for you, Herbert. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually just just responded. Uh, in, <laughs> I'm responding in, in parallel. Uh, uh, Maybe is the answer. One of the, uh, uh, well, probably I, I, I first should, uh, should uh, uh, explain a bit what, what is meant by toolbox. In parallel uh, to the, uh, to the uh, revision proposal, uh, the commission also uh, uh, provided a recommendation on a common union toolbox uh, and uh, uh, a schedule and suggestions uh, for uh, such a coordinated approach uh, to, to get the, to, to develop the, the specifications and the requirements uh, of the EU EID wallet. And uh, in that, uh, that actually the proposal by the commission is to, to, to start that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, already in September this year. And one of the first actions is already to start collecting uh, standards that are relevant and applicable. And uh, I consider that, uh, that uh, exercise pretty important because there, is, uh, there already is some legacy. Uh, like again, taking the driver driving license uh, as an example. I mean, several member states already start uh, with uh, uh, with planning or even issuing uh, electronic driving licenses, and there is a there is an ISO standard or uh, at least a final draft of a standard uh, that is applicable on that. And uh, you don't want to bury. Uh, uh, the investment uh, in such an electronic driving license because there is a, such a, uh, uh, a bright uh, new future with an European uh, EID wallet. So the legacy uh, should, uh, uh, should be taken in consideration uh, as well if there are already existing solutions. And also what is, what is on the market and what is used. Uh, and FIDO certainly is a uh, is an important standard. And I would assume that in that uh, 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 exercise of first starting to collect what are the, uh, the, the relevant standards that, that FIDO will be in there. Yeah, thank you. 
Another question um, related to this uh, picture, this diagram, the final scope uh, step four seems to provide the citizen with uh, other credentials different to the national EID credentials already owned. Uh, isn't it? Uh, what will be the fate of them? Um, actually, I was trying to um, to show that the existing electronic identity will be onboarded uh, within the EU wallet, uh, not that um, a separate uh, EID will be issued. Uh, um, another question, uh, wallet is planned to enable creation of qualified electronic signature. What does it mean if wallet will be signature activation component? Uh, should it enable signatures from different providers? Okay. I mean, uh, in terms of what will be the, the component already with the with the current uh, EIDAS proposal, uh, we there are the two options. The device the citizen has in its hand is the signature creation uh, component or uh, uh, remote signing services. And remote signing services, I mean, who knows better than, than in Daisy Group, for instance, yeah. or, or in Italy, uh, are... Uh, are uh, pretty successful uh, in, in many member states. So are devices uh, where the signature creation component is, uh, is uh, physically in the hand of the citizen. Thinking of Estonia, for instance, like the, both the mobile uh, signature and the, the uh, smart card EID uh, uh, being uh, secure signature cr creation devices uh, in Estonia. So uh, there's no uh, yes or uh, there's there's no single answer. What does it mean in the wallet? As the wallet currently is a, is a construct, but I, I would envision, uh, in particular, given the dynamics uh, you have uh, in the uh, with mobile devices, that uh, remote qualified remote signing services. Uh, provided by different providers will play an important role. That said, uh, there's no reason to not think of, for instance, uh, the UICC, so the, the electronic SIM, uh, uh, being certified as a signature creation component as well, if a provider decides to do so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. Actually, um, uh, the reason why, even if uh, somehow is unsatisfactory for those who would like to know how it really ends all this and what will be the pieces of technology that we will use uh, uh, some years from now, but uh, still um, the solution to allow that uh, uh, private identity providers like those that are um, uh, existing in some member states uh, work together and interact with uh, other identity providers that are exclusively state-led like in other uh, member states is uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, useful in order to um, bring into this uh, toolbox foreseen by the legislation um, uh, the elements that are necessary to make uh, uh, European identities uh, really work and be interoperable. But uh, it's a long stretch and there is a lot of work to do. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, we have another question. Uh, Germany has issued a smart EID law, which is closely related to the EU EID wallet. The smart EID can currently only be used on devices with a um, EIL for plus certified secure elements. Is it known uh, what the security requirements of the EU regarding are going to be? I think that will. Uh... Uh, that will require a thorough discussion uh, amongst the member states. Uh, the, uh, it, 
uh, I mean, I, I, I know the German project, and uh, it's uh, as far as I, at least as far as I know, it it's pretty much based on on, on Optimus and 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 Optimus two, and uh, whether uh, the certification requirements boil down towards uh, stating requirements on the secure element and on the assurance requirement uh, of the uh, uh, of the secure element in that case uh, will require some discussions and there are pros and, and cons uh, on on on, uh, on that and that refers a bit also to the challenges regarding certification requirements uh, I uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, one extreme would be uh, to uh, to file uh, through regulation strict requirements on the device. The question then, however, is uh, will the Apples, the Huawei, and the Samsungs follow? And uh, the balance there needs to be found. That I do not uh, argue either way whether the requirement should be rather strict or uh, loose. I just remember from, uh, well, I, I'm matured enough to, to get back a bit to history and, and, and I take Ricardo with me on that journey when, uh, when we first uh, uh, developed protection profiles some that were successful under the signature directive, uh, others on HSM that were nice but never used. Uh, and uh, that balance needs to be found because when Ricardo and I, in the early days of the signature directive and others in Sen and Etsy, uh, uh, but, uh, those two panelists, uh, had the vision of the bright new signature world, uh, Many were convinced it's sufficient that member states issue smart cards and the PC vendors will, will follow so that every PC will have a, a, a smart card reader integrated. Well, what happened to some extent, even PCs disappeared and you got tablets where you even didn't have the, the, the uh, interfaces to connect your smart card reader to. So, uh, a, uh, it's really hard to, to see what the requirements will be in the current stage because exactly such a balance needs to be found. Uh, is it sufficient to, uh, to state the certification requirements uh, and to hope for uh, uh, Apple, Huawei and Samsung to follow? I mean, actually, in terms of secure elements, it's rather the Gemaltos and so forth. So it's it, it anyway is the, the smart card providers. But uh, the the balance uh, between the requirements and what will be adopted by the market needs to be found. So it's it's a really tough question that one. Yeah, but I would like uh, uh, being a lawyer uh, to to stress this this complexity. Herbert, at the time uh, we were trying uh, to find a solution and as you said, uh, some were extremely successful and others uh, were largely ignored. Uh, well, something has changed because um, if actually uh, the legislation on uh, the digital market and services uh, uh, is really implemented by uh, the European Union, Actually, um, it will be uh, not uh, any more uh, an option for uh, owners of large platforms and gatekeepers simply to ignore sec security requirements that are dictated by the European uh, uh, cybersecurity policy and legislation. Um, and also uh, to um, come out with some very shallow security concerns that are uh, void of any substance is not going is uh, is not going to work. And um, I say this particularly because if you look at these pieces of legislation, that in my understanding, and I'm working with the Commission and also with members of Parliament uh, to achieve that. There must be a better integration between AIDAS 2 
and uh, GDPR and uh, Digital Market and Services Act because identities and um, uh, security assessments uh, uh, that are foreseen in the AIDAS are instrumental to the success of GDPR and Digital Market and Digital Services Act. So th there is a lot of work to be done, but we have a completely different scenario. And uh, I, I say this for, for those who are uh, more technical than, than legal. I mean, we have to be very clear already in the legislation, um, a monopolist is forced uh, to close agreements uh, if uh, it has a, a, a true monopoly. And we have to be very clear that a platform or an operating system uh, are actually uh, a form of monopoly because clearly only uh, technology that is compatible to these platforms can work on them. So um, there is a, uh, an incredible uh, evolution in the legal framework. And, um, and this time, um, for some aspects, we will have better tools uh, to carry on uh, uh, the work. On the other side, uh, complexity has uh, very much increased because it's not about anymore to specify the security of a tiny bit, bit of, uh, of processor that is, uh, uh, as I used to say at that time, the smallest and most stupid processor in the world. We want to make it secure. Now we, we want to make secure uh, IT um, uh, systems and, and devices that are more complex and sophisticated than the computers of NASA only 20 years ago. So uh, thank you, Ricardo. There are, uh, we will take uh, two more questions and then um, unfortunately we have to, to close the, uh, the meeting. Uh, we will organize uh, a new one uh, for sure in September after uh, holiday break uh, because uh, is uh, this is a, a topic with so many questions with, uh, with so many aspects to be taken into consideration so uh, one quick question it is planned to require uh, well as uh, 12 months for publication of uh, eidas uh, 2 is it possible to do it with lack of standardization um I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, Norbert is uh, not here, but the uh, European Commission has for sure a plan on how to address uh, these uh, requirements. And I, I wouldn't say that we have a lack of standardization. We have uh, different uh, standards. The, the key point would be to, to put them uh, together and to map them. Uh, Ricardo, I think you, you agree with that. Yeah. But still, the plan of the Commission is, I would say, heroic. Yes, but we will be committed and we will work together to, to support this plan and to uh, make it successful. We don't have other, a better choice. Yes, um, here comes the heroes, yeah? Like the, yes. yeah. <laughs> we are heroes. <laughs> we are in, in this space for, for more than 15 years, so uh, we will continue. I mean, also my two cents. It certainly is ambitious if you see 12 months. On the other hand, we currently have the proposal. So I wouldn't assume that in the next three months, the council discussions will be completed. So it's from, and on the other hand, the toolbox works, the toolbox uh, work shall start uh, from September. So we work in parallel. So it's not just the 12 months, it still may be ambitious, but uh, uh, I mean, I don't have the crystal ball, but uh, uh, negotiations of the re revision will take a few weeks as well. Yeah. And last question, uh, do you see a connection to the radio equipment directive as well, which is envisioned in the new proposal of their uh, delegated act? Yeah, I mean, I mean, not not necessarily the radio equipment uh, directive, uh, but it relates a bit it relates, uh, or, uh, to me, it's in particular relates uh, to the uh, 5G certification requirements that, that are currently under discussion. And that is not just the radio equipment directive, uh, but uh, 
in the current discussion under the Cybersecurity Act uh, on 5G certifications, it is not just the telecom providers. One of the potential candidates uh, for certification is the eSIM. So the EU uh, ICC with a uh, common criteria related uh, certification of the quote unquote SIM card. Uh, and uh, uh, I see a connection there not necessarily on certification as a QSCT or of the secure element, uh, because the PE or the secure enclave, enclave is a different component. But if on the other hand, uh, uh, from uh, different areas, we have certified uh, components in the device that make the binding of the device uh, uh, that makes the binding of the device stronger, like the SIM card. Uh, it's to some. Uh, it can be used in the in the definition of the of of the wallets. So to avoid attacks like cloning and so forth. So there is some relation, but uh, how that uh, will evolve uh, remains to be seen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Herbert. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Thank you, everyone who had the patience to, to overcome these technological issues. Uh, we will stay in touch. Please uh, send us uh, questions. Uh, those of you who uh, didn't get answers because uh, of time constraint. And we will see back again in September. Thank you very much. Goodbye.